we have official confirmation that Dragon has undocked from the space station and you can now see it pushing away from the space station as part of those undock burns. The official undock time for today was 11.30 a.m. Central Time, 12.30 p.m. Eastern Time as the space station traveled across the Northeast Indian Ocean, west of Indonesia. Dragon departure burn zero complete. Following those two brief undocking burns, there was a departure burn zero that lasted approximately 16 seconds and just completed. Away from the space station. Coming up in about four minutes, we will have departure burn one, which will last approximately 21 seconds and help move the vehicle beyond the keep out Invisible 200 meter line centered on the space station that is monitored by flight controllers to govern vehicles approaching and departing the space station. About 13 minutes after exiting the keep out sphere, Dragon will then exit the approach ellipsoid. The approach ellipsoid is an another imaginary shape, this time a three dimensional. The ISS thrusters are enabled. Copy, ISS thrusters enabled. Station, this is Houston. Are you ready for the event? WBTS, this is Mission Control Houston. Please call station for a voice check. Station, this is Raul Martinez. And Raul, we have you loud and clear. The International Space Station. Well, thank you so much for uh, doing this with us, guys. Uh, it'll be great to talk to you as well. Okay, Stephen, I want to start with you. Um, Expedition 69, um, talk about your mission, uh, where you are, and what you're hoping to accomplish right now. Uh, you know, the science we do up here, there's hundreds of experiments going on at any given time. Uh, we sort of maintain this laboratory, but we're also part of the experiments as well. Uh, you know, experiments and we help facilitate experiments, and this allows uh, the research that goes on, which is really designed to make life better on Earth. who have never been to space what what it's like up there what the experience is like i mean it yeah it's it's just truly uh i feel truly lucky to get to have this experience it's amazing uh, getting to be up here is different we're always doing different things whether it's uh, scientific research or uh, 
um, taking care of ourselves. It's every day is just different, and uh, that's part of what makes it so much fun. Stephen, you, I mean, you've had an interesting path to. Be, and then you move on to become an astronaut. I mean, was this all part of the plan? I mean, what, how did how I didn't plan on much of anything, I guess. But, you know, when you're a little kid and people are walking on the moon, you But I had the opportunity to apply through the Navy back in, uh, about starting in 1998. And uh, I basically applied, and I was incredibly fortunate and incredibly lucky to I guess I had done nothing to preclude the opportunity, and that's sort of one of the things, uh, you know, if you keep your eyes open, your ears open, you never know what opportunities you might have ahead of you. Because of where you are right now, but do you ever think long term, is this what you want to continue to do? Do you have different kind of plans? Is space kind of what is, is your goal from... as well but i mean this has to be quite the adventure and where do you want to take this uh it's it's pretty amazing you saw all my earlier incredible it's in, i have incredible fortune being with an amazing crew a great group of people so i think that makes the experience really really enjoyable uh i do We'll get home. We'll see what we want to do next after that. Uh, Woody. Things that are, that are, are difficult up there. And, and for you, outside of the challenges, the, the difficult tasks that you have to do every day, the concerns, uh, what's the most exciting part of it? And I'm can well, one that I've really enjoyed, we actually just a couple weeks ago did a couple of spacewalks. Steve and myself uh, installed some new solar array. The enormous team on the ground that uh, does a remarkable amount of preparation getting ready for these spacewalks, planning them, running them in the neutral buoyancy lab in Houston uh, to make sure that procedures are ready. But ultimately, you know, going outside where there are some objective really super rewarding so i have to ask you pass at high school the skippers uh what was it like growing up there maybe a favorite place uh to go if you ever come back to visit uh the thing you miss the most when it comes i uh, it's uh yeah, it was an incredible privilege growing up in Cohasset when I uh, when I did. Uh, I always go back. I I like the com. Obviously, the beaches, and that uh, sort of those sandy granite beaches is what I, sort of what I miss down in Texas. Uh, that that's something I. to have the opportunity to grow up and it's always nice to go back and visit do you uh do you still have family out there i mean we're in massachusetts you want to give a shout out to any uh i got a lot of family still up there not only in cohasset but in hanover and and sort of the whole area i've got relatives uh, and obviously i have friends all over new england back and visit and I'm looking for the opportunity to get back up there in the fall. I was hoping that we'd be back celebrating a couple championships, but this past couple seasons haven't worked out. There's still hope for the Sox though. We're keeping up hope here as well. <laughs> I you know it's funny, I mean are you still you still a Sox fan, huh? You still keep up with it? Can you keep up with it up in space? Keep up with it, can you uh, not as much as uh, we'd like, probably. Uh, the uh, we're about four hours ahead of y'all uh, as far as our 
being awake time. So games tend to start when I'm already asleep. So I don't tend to stay up and watch games. And so I just keep track of it that way. So Woody, uh, you're a graduate of MIT. Both of you guys are. Um, what was your experience like in Massachusetts? From uh, the Bay State. Yeah, actually, to this day, I've spent more of my life in Boston than in other, any other city. I went to MIT as an undergrad, spent four years there, and then later returned uh, many years such a, a wonderful place. I always say it's uh, both young and old at the same time. It's got so much amazing history and then it's also a college town. Uh, that combination and just uh, loved all, all the time I spent in Boston. Stephen, how about you? MIT, what was it like back then? I mean, From there, uh, uh, back when you were a student? From then, uh, uh, back when you were a student. That Boston has always had that, even when I was growing up, that uh, sort of that youthful energy, but also the tremendous history. And I think Boston is also a great walking city. So having the ability to walk across the city, uh, I did a lot of that when I was a graduate student at MIT. I We up Mass Ave once or twice. Uh, I'm not sure they enjoyed that walk as much as I did. <laughs> Guys, it was a real privilege. Thank you so much for doing this. And ties to Massachusetts, it's a real privilege. Thank you so much. Really appreciate the time. You're very welcome. Have a great day. Concludes the WBTS portion of the event. Please stand by for a voice check from AccuWeather. Christina, welcome aboard the International Space Station. We have you loud and clear. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Good morning, or you know, it's it's. Uh, Pretty exciting to talk about all of this. And, you know, let's get going with a question for both of you. Now, how would you describe life on the International Space before? 